It is time now for the Rangers GM show as Chris Young joins you now, brought to you by Anheuser-Busch and Cars for Kids. And a good afternoon, CY. How you doing? Hey, guys. I'm well. How are you all? We're doing great. You know, we're just talking about how awesome of a job you and, and Bruce and a number <laughs> of other guys have done. Um, and congrats on the winning streak, by the way. Did, did the deadline moves, did that get them energized or just make the team better? Or is there any causation there with the streak happening right after the deadline? Well, I think there's, um, you know, I think it's in part a little bit coincidence, just the team getting hot. I mean, I think coming out of San Diego, we were due to, to bounce back a little bit, respond. Um, and then part of it is, um, you know, injecting some, some energy into the team. And, you know, I've been there as a player and, uh, you know, I think the front office signaling that we believe in this group and we added to the group to make the team better, I think is important. And uh, they've certainly responded. If we take out these two winning streaks, there's just there's this big chunk of games where you guys weren't playing great, and now we're playing great. Do, can you really put your finger on exactly what should be expected consistently, or is, is this just the ups and downs of a, of a normal baseball season? No, I think it's the ups and downs. I and mean, I think that you look at you know all the best teams in baseball, they, they've gone through similar stretches um, where they play really, really well, and you have a stretch where you, know, you hope to play around 500 baseball or slightly there below. And then you get hot again and you come out of it. I think that that's uh, you know, consistent with every team. Um, and it's the way the, you know, the season goes. Is you kind of divide it up into um, you know, thirds of the season. And you hope that uh, two-thirds of the season you're playing very good baseball. And then that one-third where you have your, your down stretch, uh, that you can come out of it. Most good teams find a way. So uh, an, another injury, you guys are doing a great job of, of stepping up when some of these guys are down. Are we thinking maybe mid-September for Josh Young? Is that a, is that a decent uh, a timeline? Yeah, I, you know, we're getting more information today. I don't want to commit to a timeline at this point. I think some of it's going to depend on um, what we learned today coming out of it, and uh, and we'll go from there. But, I, I you know, I, it's unfortunate. It does stink. I feel for Josh, most importantly. Uh, he's having a phenomenal year. He's worked so hard to be in this uh, position and to go through this, another uh, big injury for him, um, it's tough. But that said, uh, this is what, again, good teams do. We have a lot of depth in our organization, a lot of depth on our 40-man roster, and, and some versatility with uh, guys like Josh Smith and Zeke Duran who can step in and uh, try to fill Josh's shoes. And uh, at some point, we hope to have Josh back, and uh, hopefully it'll you know, be at a good time where uh, he provides an added boost to us uh, you know, down the, the home stretch at the end. We've seen some reports about uh, a call-up for Jonathan Ornelas. Is there anything you can tell us about that? And, and what do you have in Jonathan there for maybe some Ranger fans that are unfamiliar with him? Well, I think most importantly is we look to replace Josh uh, Young. We're, we're evaluating kind of the needs on the infield. Corey's still nursing his uh, thumb injury. And, uh, and so I think, you know, as we want to take that day-to-day, -day, he's going to need some days off here and there uh, to manage the pain on that thing. So, I think that, uh, you know, an infielder makes the most sense, um, you know, for the short term. I think we'll evaluate over the next week to 10 days and kind of see what the long-term needs are, see if it shifts to the outfield as Zeke and Josh Smith are getting more playing time on the infield. Uh, but for now, I think it's it's kind of prudent to call up another infielder. And um, and so I think that's why we've, uh, we're have we leaning the way we are with the roster move. What are your thoughts on Andrew Heaney post-All-Star break? He has been absolutely brilliant. He's already matched his most wins in a season and with nine for his career. He's got a consecutive scoreless inning streak going. What have you noticed from him? Well, I think Andrew, uh, first of all, he's a competitor. Uh, he wants to be great. He's a veteran player who's uh, had uh, you know success in the major leagues before, and he knows what it takes, and uh, he's motivated. I think that he's uh, certainly probably wasn't pleased with uh, – you know, the overall body of work up until these last few starts. And so he's been working hard and um, and he's really responded as competitors do. It's why we signed him. It's what we've seen in him uh, in the past. And we're thrilled that he's here. And now he's kind of putting it together at a really good time for us as an organization. And, uh, you know, when you get good starting pitching, it makes the bullpen better. It makes the offense better. Uh, it's really the key to success. And Andrew certainly knows that. He's stepped up. He's been wonderful, as have all of our starting pitchers this last time through the, the uh, rotation and uh, the hope is that that continues. I saw that Heaney said he he noticed something with a mechanic, just slight tweak in Houston, and since then he's you know he's been, you couldn't score against him. Is it showing up in the metrics that you guys look at, like something he changed, or is that a coincidence? Well, yes. I mean, I, you know, certainly it, it comes and goes for pitchers, and there are times where mechanically you're locked in, you're feeling great, and then times where 
uh, you know, you lose the rhythm, you lose the feel. I always compare it to a golf swing. I'm not very good at golf, but nonetheless, I know that uh, there are no two times I play golf where my swing feels the same. And I think most golfers can probably relate. Um, yeah. You know, when you're locked in and you're you're feeling good, you know what that mechanic is, but it also, it's hard to repeat. It's hard to maintain. And so uh, it's no different than pitching. It's no different than hitting. And, um, and so there are times where you kind of find that rhythm, you find the timing, the tempo, and, uh, and it comes out well, but um, you know those things do small up in small ways, show up in small ways, and in, uh, in the metrics. And we try to help, we try to assist, but ultimately, uh, the player knows when he's locked in and feeling the best, and what that feels like. We can only make suggestions. Chris, is is there anything else after the trade deadline that you can do to help your team, or is this the team that you're just going to have to to ride it with and and see how it all plays out? Well, there, there are no major moves. I think the, from here on out, every team is dealing with uh, who they have internally, uh, both on the 26-man active roster and the 40-man roster and then within the organization. So you know, the best thing we can do is uh, continue to um, coach you know, our players, get the best out of them, uh, continue to develop from the player development side and uh, put these guys in the best position to succeed and um, kind of help them be the best they can be. And then hopefully at some point um, somebody materializes as an option, whether it's in the bullpen or an offensive option, and uh, and helps the team. But at this point, you know, we're who, who we have, the group we have is uh, is what we have, and we're excited to move forward with the, the, the group of uh, players that we have right now. We believe in them. We uh, feel great about our team, and we're excited for the next couple of months here. GM of your first place, Texas Rangers, Chris Young here with us in the G-Bag Nation. Well, speaking of uh, some of the players you have, last week we got to celebrate the additions of Max Scherzer and Jordan Montgomery. They both made their Ranger debuts. Scherzer's, my goodness, what a bounce back for him, but what stood out to you about those debuts? Well, I think just the professionalism. They were uh, really just such professional outings. They both gave up a couple runs early and then settled in and kept the team in the game and both got wins because of it. Um, with our offense, we believe we can score runs. Uh, to see those guys really just you know keep the team in the game, uh, limit the damage, and then sure enough, the offense came through. It was really cool to see and uh, exactly what we expected. CY, Chris Young here with you in the G-Bag Nation on 105.3 The Fan. Okay, and then to stay with the pitchers, and man, I, I, I'm i sorry to, ha- to have to ask about all these injuries, uh, you know, but but I, I, I did want to know how sure you guys are that Evaldi will be back at some point. Yeah, Nate's trending the right direction. He, uh, you know, he had a little bit of arm discomfort there, and uh, we think we've gotten ahead of it. It needed rest, and we've tried to give him ample rest, and he's feeling really, really good. And uh, you know, we're slowly building back up. Um, we're being responsible with it, but uh, we have a high level of confidence that he's going to be back and uh, back to his, you know, midseason form. Um, but we, we, you know, we won't get that if we don't, if we're not taking this one step at a time, if we're not building it back up responsibly. Uh, so it's really important that we play this, you know, um, as fast as we can, but uh, but but as slow as we need to as well. How uh, how normal are the the number of injuries that you guys are getting? It, it feels really unlucky right now, and I, I salute you guys for doing everything you can to not have it bog you down and just you know, keep treading forward on it. Uh, that's a great question. I really haven't focused on it. Um, I think the beauty of our group has been that um, it's kind of a next man up mentality that we really. Don't lose sleep over um, you know these types of injuries. They stink. Uh, they're a part of the game, uh, but nobody feels sorry for us, so we can't feel sorry for ourselves. And um, you know, it, my hope is that for timing them correctly, that uh, we'll get all these guys back at a great time in the season, and uh, and we'll finish strong with with all our uh, all our players healthy and and uh, and rested as well. That is the beauty of getting injured at times is that you you miss some time and you your body recovers, you feel refreshed, rejuvenated. And uh, you know, it could work to our benefit as well. No, that's actually a great point, especially Jonah, who's caught so much over the last couple of years. What about Mitch Garver? How much has he benefit, benefited from maybe catching more routinely, getting in the lineup every day now, filling in since the Jonah injury? Because he's playing some great baseball, especially at the plate. No, Mitch is really swinging. He's a veteran player. He knows how to play. Uh, he you know, obviously got off to a little bit of a slow start. Uh, with the knee injury, but he's come back. And now he had the runway to really get consistent at bats, find his rhythm, find his, his swing mechanic, and uh, you know, he's seizing that opportunity. So he's a huge part of our offense. We're really excited to see him get going here, and we think he's going to uh, be a big boost for us down the stretch. Chris, uh, you know, w- when I was in the NFL, it was always about guys that were like, you know, players 45 on back. I was wondering, what do you – what do you look for in your bench players? What are there certain traits that you want to have with your bench players, or you want to set it up a certain way that you found will work best for your team? 
Well, a lot of it depends on who we have at our core position spots. So I think that, um, you know, you want those bench players to complement uh, your everyday guys. And um, so, you know, versatility is key. Uh, mostly guys that can play different positions, that can bounce around and, uh, and give you professional at-bats and play professional defense um, to where the drop-off isn't huge when you need to give your everyday guys a rest. I mean, that's the main thing, but specific to any one skill set, I think it really depends on who your everyday guys are and uh, complementing those guys to build a complete roster. Chris, thank you so much for your time. Uh, we appreciate it, and uh, best of luck keeping this streak going in Oakland. Guys, I appreciate it. Thanks for the time, and I'll uh, talk to you next week.